Describing all the Terminator movies in six minutes seems like a tough thing to do, so it's best we get right into it. Hi, I'm Tim. You're watching Awesome Movies, and let's immediately dive right into the very beginning of the Terminator franchise. The machines rose from the ashes of the nuclear fire. Their war to exterminate mankind had raged on for decades, but the final battle will not be fought in the future. It would be fought in our present, tonight. This is what the opening scene of The Terminator tells us. In the future, there's a war between humans and the computer system Skynet, and the only hope for humanity is General John Connor, a heroic leader and creator of the Resistance Group, who fights against the artificial intelligence. But what if John Connor never existed? The evil machines once thought, and they send a ruthless cyborg back in time. A huge mass of muscle and metal called Terminator T-800, who arrives in LA 1984, fully naked with only one mission – to find and kill John's mother Sarah Connor, before John was even born. T-800 finds himself close and starts to hunt down and kill every Sarah Connor listed in a phone book one by one. But what if we send our best soldier back in time to protect Sarah Connor? Thought the brave people from the Resistance, and that's how Kyle Reese appeared all naked in LA 1984 too. Cause you know, in the future there may be time travel technology, but it's still impossible to keep your clothes while doing it. Anyways, Kyle finds clothes and rushes to save Sarah Connor from T-800, and that's how the crazy chase begins. Kyle explains to Sarah that in the future, he knows her unborn child, John Connor. More than that, Kyle confesses that John Connor gave him Sarah's photo in the future, and since he first saw her, he fell in love with her deeply. And of course, Sarah and Kyle have sex. And of course, their baby will be none other than John Connor himself. Ta-da! But Kyle won't stay with Sarah for long, cause T-800 comes back for a final battle, where Kyle heroically dies and Sarah destroys the Terminator, crushing it in a hydraulic press. The cool tiny detail in the movie is the scene where Kyle tells Sarah that he always wondered what she was thinking at the moment that the photo was taken. Well, at the very end of the movie, Sarah Connor gets a Polaroid photo of herself while thinking of Kyle. And this is the photo that John Connor will give Kyle in the future. Talk about the sweetest time paradox ever! Now it's 1995. Sarah Connor is locked in a psychiatric hospital, cause this is what happens when you tell people about time travel in a war with machines. At the same time, her 10-year-old son John lives with his foster parents. And the reason this movie exists is that Sarah Connor didn't completely destroy the Terminator in 1984 with the hydraulic press, which will help the scientist Miles Dyson reinvent the Skynet company from reverse engineering parts in the future. So two time travelers arrive in LA from the future, both naked, but this time they are both Terminators. One of them is T-800, who finds himself badass clothing, a motorcycle and sunglasses, and the other one is T-1000, a newer and much more dangerous Terminator model who is able to change its shape. T-1000 kills a cop, takes his car and reappears in his uniform. It appears that both Terminators have different missions, and only one of them, which is T-1000, has a mission to kill John Connor, while T-800 is revealed to be a good Terminator who will protect John Connor. Then the chase begins again, and it is way crazier than it was in the first movie. Both T-800 and John help Sarah Connor to escape the hospital. They find scientist Miles Dyson and convince him to destroy the leftover parts of the Terminator from 1984, CPU and the arm, and the whole laboratory as well, which leads to Dyson's death. They also destroy Terminator T-1000 by pushing it into a pool of molten steel, just like how the One Ring was destroyed. So it seems like everyone can live happily ever after, except for Terminator T-800, cause he still has the CPU in his head, and that's why it had to be destroyed, the same way the One Ring was, and that scene made even the toughest men on planet Earth cry like little girls. The story continues in 2004 in Terminator 3 The Rise of the Machines, and this is the breaking point where all the obvious plot holes start to appear. There was no war with Skynet, cause it was prevented in the previous movie. John Connor is an adult now, and for some reason, he forgets how old he was when he met T-800. They tried to murder me before I was born. When I was 13, they tried again. Wrong! You were 10, John! 10! Anyway, the story goes almost the same way it does in the previous movies, except for some moments. Like, for example, Sarah Connor isn't in the movie, cause she dies because of leukemia. Evil Terminator now is a sexy woman, called TX, and Skynet is back again, but this time the government is behind it. What a twist! TX has a mission to terminate John and other future Resistance fighters, while the Resistance sends a good Terminator to protect them. And as crazy as it sounds, this particular Terminator model was the one that killed John Connor in the future. Don't try to understand it, let's just move on to the fourth part. 
The story starts with a weird and unnecessary storyline in 2003, where death row inmate Marcus Wright agrees to sign over his body for some creepy medical research. Then we go to a post-apocalyptic world in 2018, where the war between Skynet and humans is a real thing, and John Connor is the leader of the Resistance. John discovers that there is the kill list created by Skynet, and that his name is the second on it. Any guesses who number one is? Yep, it's Kyle Reese, the man who will be sent to the past in order to protect Sarah Connor and to become a father of John. Meanwhile, Marcus appears again, as a cyborg now, even though at the beginning he doesn't know he's a cyborg. He gets saved by Kyle, and Kyle gets captured by Skynet. Marcus meets John. They both save Kyle, destroy Evil T-800, bomb the facility, John gets stabbed in the heart, and Marcus sacrifices himself, giving John his heart. Jesus Christ! Trust me, none of these events really matter, because the creators of the next Terminator movie, Genesis, became even more confusing. They completely rewrote the whole Terminator storyline by inventing its own brand new and stupid timeline. Kyle Reese is sent back to 1984 just like in the first movie, but T-1000's waiting for him there. Suddenly, Sarah Connor appears, but she's much younger than she was in the first movie. She saves Kyle and explains that she's already familiar with Skynet, because there was another T-1000 sent back to 1973 to kill her, and another reprogrammed T-800 to protect her. In 1973, T-800 destroys T-1000 and literally raises Sarah Connor. And and nobody, I mean nobody, explains who actually sent this good T-800 into 1973. And you know what? All of these events are also not that important because of the new Terminator Dark Fate, which pretends that the third, fourth, and fifth movies of the franchise just don't exist. Yep, which means that there might be another Terminator movie, or five, or six, or ten more. Who knows? And each one of them can just reinvent and rewrite whatever the hell they want. Brilliant. If you guys for some reason haven't watched any of the Terminator movies, here's my advice for you. Just watch the first two films and ignore all the rest. Simple as that. Thank you for watching this video, subscribe to our channel, and as always, stay awesome!